I get this Airbnb anyway, and it's in Morden, in in Wimbledon, down okay. past Wimbledon, and it was, it was like sixty quid, bedroom, two single beds, blah blah blah. Looked at all the reviews. Reviews were like so nice, really good. Cannot wait to stay again. And I thought, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not going to be arriving till four o'clock. I've got two shows. I'm not going to be back until one. I'm going to get up early. When I'm in London, I go to the libraries. Mm -hmm. So I work in the library. So I was in Liverpool. I used to go to the to, uh, to John Moore Library. And I'd work there all day. Edit videos, do my admin, work on my show. And I thought, Saturday, I'll get up. I'll watch Football Focus. I'll go get breakfast, watch a bit of Football Focus. And then I'll go into London. And then I'll do my shows. And then I have sleep. Anyway, I arrive at this house. Do all the booking. Arrive at the house. Something was, just wasn't right. Just, just wasn't right. I arrive anyway, and I open the door, and this lovely lady opens the door, really nice woman. And I'm like, hi, I'm Andrew. She's like, hey, and I'm like, oh, nice to see you. You all right? And I walk in anyway, and I walk past the sitting room, and it's the kitchen. And I was like, oh, yeah, great. Yeah. She goes, oh, have you just arrived? So we're just doing that small chat. And I yeah. you know, it's a bit awkward, and it's so fucking awkward. Like, you're like, it's like, it's like I've turned up to, like, the first date, but I have to live with them for a weekend. Bye. <laughs> Anyway, I turn up and I see the stairs and I'm just about to go up the stairs. She goes, oh, no, no, you're actually in here. I'm in the sitting room. The fuck? On a sofa? Like, or was there a bed? I'm in the sitting room. My room is the sitting room. Oh, fucking hell, no. With a bed that is pushed up against a radiator <laughs> next to the window. <laughs> the advertised was two single beds with wardrobes. And she went, no, 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 you're in here. No. So what did you do? I'm in the sitting room. I have pictures of it. <laughs> I'm in the sitting room. So you go in. There's two bedrooms upstairs. I'm thinking I'm getting one bedroom with two single yeah. beds as advertised. I'm in the fucking sitting room. I walk in. There's a sofa. There's a table. There's a TV. There's a fireplace. There's a picture of fucking kids I don't know. <laughs> and then there's this bed. And the, the headboard was the fucking radiator. Jesus Christ. So what did you say? So I'm, standing there, I'm just in shock. I'm just like going, all right, yeah. And the Irish in me went, Jesus, this is a great setup. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this is a great space in this room, isn't it? God almighty. <laughs> Jesus, you could swing a cat in here. Can you it's... get BBC and RT on that telly? Oh, my God. So anyway, I was just like, but it was clean. Now, don't get me wrong, it was yeah. clean. And I was just like, okay, okay. I'm in this room. I don't think to myself, I'm in, I got this wrong. I read the advert wrong. Aye. The advert was single bed in the sitting room. Yeah, <laughs> this is my fault. <laughs> maybe this is me. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I'm Irish. Like, I, I would, of course I fucked this up. Yeah, that is, that is something so I would do. She gives me the keys anyway and she shows me round. And I'm thinking, right. So we go into the kitchen. She goes, so this is the kitchen. I'm like, I've been in kitchens before. <laughs> and she goes, you can make tea, whatever you want. I goes, oh, thanks very much. So she brings me upstairs. And upstairs, there's two fucking bedrooms. And she shows me the shower and all that. It's nice and clean. Like, yeah. I'm not like, it was perfectly fine. But I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be in one of those rooms. Anyway, she go back down anyway. And I think she thought I was a bit put out. Right. She thought like, she knew something was up with me. Because I was just like going, sitting room. I'm sitting in the sitting room. So I'm now thinking to myself, are you going to be in the sitting room? Yeah. Are you going to be in the sitting room watching telly while I'm lying in my like bed? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> So I'm thinking, and she, and she actually said to me, is everything all right? And I went, oh, yeah, it's grand jazz. Yes. I'm just mad busy. I didn't know what to say to her. So she leaves me. So I just sit in the sitting room. And I'm just looking around the sitting room going, okay, 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 this is it. This is where we are. This is where I am in my life. So I take out my phone and I look at the booking. And the booking says you have two single beds with access to the bathroom and the sitting room. I'm in the fucking sitting room. <laughs> so, I've now spent, with the booking and the service fee, about 150, 160 quid on this. So Fuck I'm thinking, hell. look, let me have a think. This is fine. It's like sleeping on someone's sofa. Yeah. So I'm thinking, right, I'm only going to do one night and I'm going to leave, but I'm not going to tell her I'm going to leave. I'm going to just leave and say, something's come up. You know, I'm going to do that fucking shitty fucking, oh, it's not me, it's you. It's me, it's definitely, it's all of us. Yeah. We've all messed up here. I've made a mistake by booking this. You've lied to me. My life's a mess. I need to go home. So I decide what I'm going to do is I sit down, get the Wi-Fi on. 
and I Google the trains and I think, is there any way I can get to Gatwick at two in the morning? And there's buses going from Victoria because yeah. of the train strike. Two hour bus, I'm not fucking paying for that. So I could change, I've got EasyJet uh, membership, so I can change my flights for free. Yeah. So they normally charge you 40 quid, but I just pay the fare difference. So I looked, the fare difference was 16 quid to get the 7.30 a.m. flight. <clears throat> I thought, I'll do an all-nighter. I'll do one night here and I'll do an all-nighter. So I go out and I do the gig anyway and I just forget about the Airbnb. I think it'll be fine. Do the gigs, come back, sneak in, go upstairs, brush my teeth. I was like, what the fuck? This is weird. I go in, the heating isn't on. You know, right. it's, I'm right next to the window. The train goes under the house. Oh, fucking hell. And I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. So, but I get to sleep. And it was actually really good sleep. Yeah. Like, it was totally fine. And I was like, oh, maybe maybe I'm overreacting here. Maybe I'm an arsehole here. Like, maybe this woman, you know, is just trying to make a few quid. Good luck to her. She was a lovely person. I get up in the morning anyway. I shower. I leave the house at around 10 a.m. And I message her. And I say, just want to say, I had a really good sleep. And she replied, oh, thanks so much. Enjoy your day in London. And then I said to myself, you know what? This is totally fine. Like, I just overreacted in my head. So I spent a day in London. I said, I can't get the flight. So I'm, go I'm going to have to spend the second night in the Airbnb. Go into London. All good. I get home from oh. fucking London. <laughs> that night at around 1 a.m. And I decide that I'm going to be leaving at 8 a.m. to get my flight. And I get in. And everything's normal. Everything's fine. So quiet. But there's people now in the room that are staying. In, she's doing, in your room? I think <laughs> she did double Airbnb. So right. she's given the room upstairs to two people and she's put me in the sitting room. But the people upstairs are snoring <laughs> so loud. And it wasn't just like, it was. Yeah. It was like a fucking animal was let loose up there. I can't sleep. Like I can't fucking sleep. And there's other cars in the driveway. And then I go into the kitchen and all the washing, her oh, dirty washing, the, the clothes, Aye. it's just there. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> then there's movement upstairs. This is one, two o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking, what's going to go on? And then I think, now, I could have got this wrong and I'm not saying this happened, but I think it happened. Now, it either happened in my head <laughs> or it happened in real life. Somebody came into my room at about four in the morning. Fucking hell. Now, I don't know. Did that? I don't think... Maybe I woke up. Either someone came in the door to go upstairs to go to bed or they came in my room. So I don't know. Was there somebody asleep upstairs because there's two single beds right. and there was somebody else staying but they hadn't come back in yet. But when they came back in, they came into my room because I remember just waking up and just hearing this door. Now, I don't know. Was it my door for the sitting room or door for the front door? Now, I could be completely wrong here, but... At five o'clock in the morning, I'm like, I'm still hearing all these noises upstairs. <coughs> I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? So I just pack up and go, and just like, right. get the fuck out of here. I was expect, I just, you know, the way you see all these movies, like six fellas coming in from fucking Russia, passport Aye. money now. <laughs> but the lady was so lovely. Aye. But I never again. Yeah. Up to, uh, I used to run marathons when I was in my 20s. Before I was a comedian, I used to do a lot of running. I've run, run a few marathons. Half marathons was my speciality. Mm -hmm. 10Ks and stuff like that. I'd love to. I'd love to have been able to have taken part in like a uh, competitive running when I was in my twenties. Okay. But um, the thing is, the thing about like people nowadays. I I I was I was thinking about this is like you know the way everyone now is like running marathons, which I think is fantastic. Yes. And people are raising money for really really good charities. It'd be really funny if you were the anti marathon run no, guy I, right now. If you were well, to take that up. stand. But the thing about it is, is that like. When I did my marathon, I wasn't on Instagram. No. I wasn't on Facebook. You didn't get the praise. I, I know. I would just go running and I would do my it times. Was for you. And I would, I would, I would have to write my times down on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and I would have a watch, and then I would get, I got a little sat nav. So I had my watch, a little sat nav thing, and that would, and I used to have to carry this massive thing, in my arm. But now, now it's all about fucking follow me on my journey to ten couch to ten k and right. all this kind of stuff. I'm like, really. I don't want to see the journey. I want you to. See, I want to. See, I want to see you at the end. I, want, I don't mm. want to see you fucking follow me on the journey. Like yeah. fucking get off your fucking ass. Yes, you should be doing this anyway, mm -hmm. and don't be putting it up online. Aren't you so fucking brave? There's people out there running marathons before breakfast. 
Right. And they're not putting it up on Instagram. No. But I do think some of them are a bit up their own arse when it comes to marathon running. It's kind of like, I look at them mm. and I go, oh, I'm running for a cancer charity. That's amazing. Fair play to you. Yeah. My mum died of cancer. I'm totally cool. I'm on board by that. Yeah. But then there's a little part of me going like, all oh, right, you're amazing. Like mm. if I if I did it in my time, I think I would have put it up on Instagram. But <laughs> now I'm like looking at it and I'm just like going, fucking hell right. I get it. You're running a marathon. Fair play to you. I have donated to people who do, who have, oh. I have donated, I've donated to four people this year who run a marathon. Oh, I've done. On loads. the basis then that I donate and then I mute their stories. Yeah. yeah. I can't, so I'll say, look, you can see that I've noticed it. Yeah. Now I'm, now I'm withdrawing. Yeah, I'm out, I'm out yeah. of the, yeah. I'm, my 20 pound entitles me to not have to look at your stuff every game. Exactly. I don't have to like any of it I don't have to comment on any of it exactly. I've donated you've I, got, you got what you wanted of me congratulations you win and if you run that marathon and you die of a heart attack in it I'm just saying you know I ain't running a marathon to raise money for a heart attack and charity. I want the money back and I want my 20 good because it's not going to go to child it's going to go to your funeral clearly and I don't want any stake in that Yeah. You know? I ran the uh, did I ever tell you about the time I ran the London Marathon I broke up with my girlfriend on the day of the final why is, the the why is every story you have always revolve around I tell you when and my, I broke up my girlfriend this day too <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm such a fucking I loser when, like, I went bought bread but I broke up with my girlfriend <laughs> on that day as well so will I tell you what happened right so yes. I was running the London Marathon and I got a place in the London Marathon running for the guide dogs for the blind and I was working <laughs> <laughs> why is that so funny because it, so it, it sounds London. more like you're doing it for the dogs rather than the blind people <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's more for them to get like kibble and <laughs> and veterinary care <laughs> for after they work with the blind people <laughs> I was running for the guide dogs for the blind right and I was doing the what why is that so it's a fucking ch- I raised three grand Aaron it still sounds like you're saying it for the dog I raised three grand for the guide dogs for the blind <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Yeah, there's, right, okay. there's guide dogs walking around living in a castle because you ran them <laughs> living in a castle yeah <laughs> just sitting there on pedigree chum <laughs> just be like going, oh Andrew's 26.2k miles <laughs> paid so for the this. fucking shoot so the fucking so the fucking <laughs> I raised three grand for the guide dogs for the blind <laughs> yep okay. so blind people have guy. I didn't raise the money for the I didn't raise money for the blind people I raised money so that they could train dogs to help blind people <laughs> The gay dogs have like Gucci fucking. <laughs> the gay dogs have Gucci. Bags. They've got that diamond fucking <laughs> collars and stuff. And they've got like live, laugh, love across the front of their <laughs> chest. Anyway, oh. so I, I got a, I, the only com- there was the only charity that was left to raise money for was the <laughs> was the gay dogs from the blind. Why? Is that <laughs> the only one left? It's like you went to a fur being like, oh fuck, cancer's gone, dementia's but that's what gone. Happened. Bridge. What's left here? We've only got the blind dogs yeah, yeah, yeah. for the guy dogs and the blind mate. And you're like, all right, I'll do it. No, what happened was I didn't Have get you no more Alzheimer's left. <laughs> no, we fucking I can't remember. Any celiac disease charities? No, no MS. Police no MS. Uh, Motor new run? Anyone? No. You know Parkinson's left? <laughs> ah, it's a shaky one. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> I guess he's run out of fucking chicken. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> guess I'll have a wrap. <coughs> Can cope. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. You passed probation there. Oh, oh, good. So, what happened was, I didn't get my place in the ballot mm. for the London Marathon. So, the only way that you can get a place then is if you go with a charity. So, I went on the website and look at all the available charities. And the guide dogs for the blind were the only ones that were available, right? I wonder why that was last. <laughs> I don't think there's a big queue of people being like, do you know what the word means? I'm sorry. So what to do is the charities, what to do is to say you have to raise a minimum amount and then you get... Cheeky so, bosses. Yeah, you have to raise a minimum amount. I think it was like two grand. Fuck. Uh, so basically, you get your space in the London Marathon, but you have to, you, it's two grand. And ideally, you do that through charity fundraising. Mm-hmm. And if, say, you only raise 1,500 to charity, mm-hmm. you have to pay 500 yourself. That's to get you your place. So I was working in a bank at the time and the bank agreed to match the money for the guide dogs for blind. Right. So what I did was I raised something like, you know, 1500 quid and they doubled it. And then it was three grand. And then as soon as I was over the two grand threshold, I just stopped collecting well, money because yeah, yeah, I was like, I've done it. Yeah. So I went. So this is what happened. I was going out with a girl at the time. Really nice girl, actually. We were together um, a couple of a couple of months and I was staying in her house out in Essex the night before the marathon. And I was starting in Greenwich, which is out kind of like by... Charlton area 
and you have to be at the start time like say whatever seven o'clock and my target was I thought I was I was good enough I my I was running to seven and a half minute eight minute miles but on shorter runs I could do like seven minute miles so my my target was to do it in three hours 45 less than three hours 45 I get down to the start in Charlton but that morning I got up that morning and I kind of had a bit too much food I, I, I fueled up too much I had uh, too much porridge Anyway, I had a bit of a heavy stomach, got to mile 18 and had a mental breakdown. Just had mile a, 18? At mile 18, had a fucking mental breakdown. Right. I was running through a... You were like, why am I doing this for dogs? <laughs> I don't even like why? them. Why? <laughs> I don't even have a dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, every time I see a guide dog with a blind person, I walk past it and go, that was me, that. That was me. He's going to Tesco because of me. <laughs> He's going Tesco because of me. That's why the I fucking gay dogs are like super overqualified now. They've got like master's yeah. degrees. They do. They've got fucking GCSEs. <laughs> They've been put for uni. They've got a so, degree. <laughs> they fucking do the, do the gap year over in Bali. <laughs> Where's your dog? He's got a gap year over in Bali. <laughs> why? Because Andrew broke down at mile 18. 18. And he needs time to recover. <laughs> so mile 18, I have a mental... They call it hitting the wall, but I had a mental breakdown. And I got to the point where I needed to go to the toilet, right? Okay. So I was doing a Paula Radcliffe. Remember Paula Radcliffe? I remember she toilet. pissed. Yeah. Then I, no. She stopped to piss. She shit. She, she had an incident. Did, uh, no, we needed to establish it. Did she, she shit She was running piss? in the marathon and she, um, she did everything. She let it all. I think em- she did it everything. Emptied yeah. the bugs. Okay. And fair play to her. No better woman. No better woman. <laughs> Was there a if list you want of any women? woman to piss on the street, you want Paula Radcliffe to piss on the street. Fair play to her. She can do whatever. There's a lot wants. of Paula Radcliffe on Belfast on Friday nights. If you ever <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I tell you, oh, fuck. I saw something last week in Belfast, man. <laughs> Let's come back okay. here, but I'm excited. So I'm running about mile 18, and there's people running past me dressed up as fucking Lego. And like Spider Man and Fathers for Justice. I just want to see me kids. Oh fuck! Oh, look, and I'm this. losing time, and I I'm mentally I'm I'm going. Anyway, I'm running. I've got my guide dog T-shirt on, like my guide dog T-shirt on, right? <laughs> and as I'm running, what are you laughing at? Why is that so? That's not funny. It's so funny. I have a, the whole thing is hilarious. I'm gonna put a picture of me at the end of this podcast with my medal. I actually, have it here of me medal, right? Yeah. Anyway, I, I break down and I get to mile... And when you get to mile 16, mile 18, like, there's still another eight to go. Like, yeah. it's, it's an absolute fucking shit fuck in the head, like... Yeah. So I'm running anyway, and, and my batteries in my uh, Walkman... Not my Walkman, but, like, me this thing I had. Wow. Battery went. So I could now genuinely hear the, the crowd cheering. And I'm running, and there's just people shouting, Go, guide dogs! <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, guide dogs. And I'm running on go. Are you shouting for me? Is there, is there another guide dog? I was like rival guide dog for the blind charity people around us. I'm the fucking best guide dog for the blind person, right? <laughs> so I finished the marathon anyway, and I'm in absolute bits. I did it in four hours and 40, one hour slower than what I wanted to do. From mile 18 to 26, I couldn't cope with it. I just couldn't cope with it. And six weeks later, I ran the Cork City Marathon. And I'll tell you how I wanted to get back. And then after that, I never ran again. But the thing is, I arrive at the finish line at the London Marathon. You arrive and they literally put a medal on you straight away. Mm-hmm. And then the guide dogs for the blind had a massage parlour thing that they were going to put you in, right? So you go in for a free massage. <laughs> no. I swear to God. <laughs> this is a bunch fucking... of fellas like this. <laughs> no. Well, no, like that was the charity. The, the, the guide dogs for the blind have their own tents and their own stalls. So when you finish running for the guide dogs, you walk in and they give you refreshments, they give you jellies, they give you sweets. They give you Lucas Wheat biscuits aid. shaped like bones. <laughs> like, Here you go. There's a couple of dogs there as well. They have the dogs there as well, so you can see model. <laughs> model this dog. is an example of mannequins, what you sponsored. <laughs> mannequin dogs. And you put two ten p into the into the. You, you know, you put money into the mannequin dog to for charity. The dog rocks forward and back like that, right? That sings a wee song for Christmas. So I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the guy dogs are blind, I'm lying in this bed and this man just starts rubbing me, you know, and he's going like, he's like, I don't even work here, mate. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. You looked really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, is this, what's this for? Oh, what the fuck? Is <laughs> so I grabbed my phone and my girlfriend at the time uh, was supposed to meet me. Uh-huh. We we're supposed to go to a meeting point where I could meet her and she was living up in Essex at the time. And I go to my phone anyway, and it was just a text on my phone. This is true now, right? So the marathon started or whatever. Just said, keep running, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I've left. I'm gone with the dog. He can see now. <laughs> that doesn't 
make any sense because the dogs aren't blind. No. <laughs> you, when you're down there for a month, like, what are you actually doing? Are you just sitting reading? Are you actually going out and doing stuff? Or are you like, right, we're going for a trek today, dinner tonight, a few pints in the evening. Like, are you actually going into Cork City? Are you going over to Kerry at no, all? Never go to Cork like, City. Like, is it just literally... Never leave. You just sit just becoming part of the furniture yeah. for the whole month. <laughs> yeah. The people are like, hey, Colin's back again, yeah. is he? <laughs> <laughs> you're down for your month, are you, Colin? I saw you on the thing there. You should be trying to be a comedian. And stuff like that. It is all that sort of shit. And uh, I bought a boat at one point because I lost the run of myself. And uh, like a sailing boat. And like a wee small dinghy thing. But I couldn't swim, let alone sail. So I bought this thing. And then I thought, <laughs> this is how patronised and how confident I was. I thought, sure, it can't be that fucking difficult. And uh, it is. And um, I, could just, I could just see on the headline, uh, uh, Space has appeared on a blame game panel. <laughs> Colin Murphy has currently lost at sea. Like, you know. I said, my message, she was shouting me, you have no respect for the sea. And uh, she could sail, but she wouldn't go on a boat with me. Right. And um, so I just went, well, I'm off. So I was fucking floating around the harbour. And it could, like, it's a harbour, so everybody's yeah. sitting out watching you. So every mistake you make, Licking, it's been and when it's on the water, every sound you st- is reflected and everybody can hear me going, oh, for fuck's sake, fucking... Because something isn't working, yeah. And then you go up to the pub, all confident. And you walk in the pub, and then the boy would be standing going, "Are you the boy that bought the boat? I can't sell the boat." <laughs> <laughs> and that was I was known as the boy that bought the boat that can't sell the boat. <laughs> and then everybody would tell me something that I'm doing wrong. They'd all see me. If you can take a bit of advice, <laughs> <laughs> that's such a core thing. If you can take a bit of advice, I'll just give you a bit here. Yeah, it's such a core thing. It's coming anyway. <laughs> Would you mind if I said this to you? Don't let it gap. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Would you mind if I said this to you? But what you did there was wrong. You never even gave me a chance to answer the question. <laughs> you know, it's an awful whore. <laughs> you, the, the so, no, this is, the best, this is the best West Cork thing ever I heard. There was a guy who uh, lives sort of locally and um, he's a bit of a bollocks. Right. And a bit of a local bollocks. Yeah, just a bit of a bollocks. Right? Okay. Just a bit, you know, a bit big I am. So... I was asking one of the local boys, I said, what, like, you know, what's the deal with him? And he says, put it this way. He says, I don't hate the fella. But you know, if I clipped him with the car <laughs> of an evening, <laughs> I wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jackie was fine in the mirror, but I wouldn't stop. You, oh, I see. I, I know those people. We Clip, all know those people. Like, like I wouldn't be afraid of, I wouldn't. If he did a bit of damage, sure, fucking, he'd probably deserved it. Just yeah. in a kind of way. But yeah, we don't yeah. want anything bad to yeah. happen to no. him. No. But we just want to send a bit but of a message. It wouldn't be the worst thing to happen Worth to him. It wouldn't be the worst thing. Whereas I'm the opposite. No, I'd be like, that him, fuck. I'd just be straight. Like, it's like me with cyclists. You know, every time I do gigs and I always say, is there any cyclists in? I go, what's the red light mean? Just look at him and like, because if, fuck, if I clip him like a fucking. <laughs> I'm more worried about the damage to me car than a cyclist, like, you know? <laughs> One thing, uh, when you were growing up here in, in Belfast, um, what do you think was the thing that made you want to get into comedy? I just always watched it. Do you know, do you know why when, you're at, when I was younger, like, you would have a DVD or a video as a nightlight? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You go to bed, here's your video. Mine was Peter K. Yeah. When I was, like, four or five. Live at the Bolton Albert Halls. That's the exact one, big purple yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. I would watch and that. And eat balloons on the side of the chair, didn't they? Yeah. Looking back now. I lost like, 17 stone in a day. That, like, that video was cute. Like, at the time when DVDs fucking mattered. Yeah. Like, who gives a shit now about DVDs? But that was massive. And I just, oh, or sit, my parents would let me stay up late sometimes, watch Nevermind the Buzzcocks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm That's a, a gear change, like, from yeah. Peter K to Nevermind the Buzzcocks. It, it was almost like you were like, stay up late and watch this, like, yeah. a little bit ruder. But a completely different comedy. Yeah. yeah I just I mean? loved all, all comedy, always. That's what I would watch. Would you be a fan of Father Ted? Love Father Ted. Yeah. Love Father, Father Ted. Father Ted was the thing that got me into comedy. Black Books was a big fan of. Uh, just anything like there, I was just a, love there was a radio show in Ireland called Scrap Saturday right that Dermot Morgan did before Father Ted and it was a radio show and he used to like impersonate Irish polit- politicians and um, I think it was like the late 80s uh, early 90s um, and it was on every Saturday morning and that was the first thing that got me into comedy because I remember being driven to like Gaelic football training and on a Saturday morning and it would come on and he would do impressions of like Charlie Haw he who was who used to be in a Taoiseach in Ireland and uh-huh. ended up being is that how you say that? What? Say it, Tashuk? Tishuk. 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 You know, Tishuk. You've heard that before, haven't you? I, 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 I've you heard t- it. You've Tishuk and Tarnishta. I've never heard so, of Tarnishta. Is that president? No, that's like Deputy Prime Minister. Right. So the Tishuk. Because I said this on Tom O'Malley's podcast the yeah. other day and called him a Tiosek because I didn't know no, what it was t- saying. No, it's Tishuk. Yeah, we don't say Prime Minister or. or uh, what's the, what's the, what did they use in Belgium? Premier. Yeah. They use like Premier in Europe. 
Prime Minister in England and in Ireland we use Taoiseach. Taoiseach. And then the number two is the Tawnishta. Right. Ta. Tawnishta. Tawnishta. Right. Can you speak any Gaelic? No interest. <laughs> <laughs> you probably spell fast. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was about to say, you really are new. I expect you to sit here and be like, oh, shut up. They set up a Gaelic football team in East Belfast and its training was threatened to be bombed three times. Really? And that was last I've year. Seen, I've seen the picture. I've driven past it. Yeah. And I just said to myself, if that is still there in five years' time, whoever set that up should go to the Middle East because they will be able to sort out that crisis. <laughs> yeah. If you can put a GA club in East Belfast, you the UN should be recruiting you. Send that for, fucker for to Palestine. Send that guy to Palestine. What, lads? Yeah. Let me let me explain how it is. We need to put in a Gaelic pitch yeah, yeah. down the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Palestinians and Jewish people, let's come yeah. together. Yeah. Then Gaelic side, right? You're half back. Like no yeah. problem. I think I think I genuinely think if you if whoever put up the East Belfast GA pitch w- should get a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Yeah, because it was such... I mean, it's one of those things, like, even people I knew were angry about it. And people who I knew weren't bigoted. Uh, well, until that came out. Yeah. And they were raging. And I'm like, why do you give a fuck? But it's it was a big, big thing in East Belfast. They were like, how dare they play this game up here? Unbelievable. It's it just... would blow your... From down south where you don't have that contention. Yeah. And it's not that bad up here anymore. Like, my life would be different from what Paddy grew up in. Yeah. But, like, there's still certain things that people don't like. There's people who don't like outright Irishness and people who don't like really? outright Britishness. Outright Irishness. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I personally wouldn't describe myself as Irish, Does but you... I wouldn't say British either. I'm I'm just a legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm what, just what you, me. What are you? I would Northern say Irish. Northern Irish. You're just Northern. I feel I feel it's a different thing. Are you like trying to do the Maury, Rory McIlroy line where I'm just I'm just from Northern Ireland? Yeah, not even a line. That's me. Like I, I just have nothing in common with you know like a lot of British people or indeed a lot of Irish people. You're just your own entity. I'm just, yeah. I'm very proud Sean, of you, Sean. what was your opinion on the, the Queen dying? I mean, it's obviously sad that somebody dies. Loves it. Loves Absolutely the fucking, fucking love it. Was out celebrating in the felon's bar. I seen him <laughs> two in the morning doing cocaine <laughs> off. Wearing a Celtic jersey, <laughs> waving the fucking picture of Bobby Sands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not no, the be stereotypical West Belfast, felt like, but just not a fan. Like, yeah, you know? and that's okay. But there's and, people in the UK that were just like, oh, whatever. I know somebody that, like, they were just like, didn't watch one minute of it. Not arsed. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. And like, here, I did um, take part in the whole spectacle of it as well. Like, when King Charles came, when was that last Thursday? Yeah, he came to the um, I was in work and I dandered around, what, waited on the car driving past and stuff. Right. Just because there's a big crowd in the middle of town. And right. what, no, did no, you do like, anything when he went past? No. <laughs> Sped on the car. But yeah, you can't. Yeah, no, yeah, um, yeah. I saw his flight. I was, I was looking, um, I, I was looking at all the windows because I was going like, I mean, if there's ever a time for an assassination, like, and he wasn't then, like, well, maybe it was. An All right, Harvey Lee McDonald. I, know, but I, was, I was going like, I was going like, holy shit! Like, this is all of a sudden, and it's in the middle of Belfast, and there's a royal. Do you coming. know? Sometimes I have that thought though. Whenever like, not even just yeah. Whenever you see like a celebrity in public or something, you're like, someone could just shoot them. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a weird, and impulsive thought. And yeah, I thought he was going to come past in like. I don't know why, but no, like a Pope mobile or something, no, like the big bulletproof. But that, but that car is so bulletproof, though. The yeah, Pope bro. one, but, but the, the, but the Pope one and the Prince, stuff. the King Charles. Oh, the King Charles one, absolutely yeah. is. Because so, I, I sort of plane went over my house. Oh really? Yeah, because oh. it was on the telly, you see. Class. And uh, it landed in Belfast City, and then you obviously the BBC follow him, like. Yeah. And then he was only here for what four hours, was it? Yeah, I'm sure he couldn't have been fucked being here. Because again, I come back to this point. I co- no, I come back Don't to this point. Shit, do the- Here's the thing. Again, 33, I want to do fuck all. At the age of 73, would I really want to be sitting on a Tuesday afternoon and have someone come around to me and go, all right, you have to get on a plane now and go to Northern Ireland and make friends of all them. And be like, fuck off. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just want to sit with my big fucking sausage fingers, have the biggest sausage wank in the fucking <laughs> history and just fucking jizz all over Camilla's wrinkly old fucking dude. Right, now... <laughs> Fuck the fucking king. <laughs> no, don't, don't. Here's. The... <laughs> oh my god. Put, er, Aaron, you're going to get this podcast cancelled. Clip that one. When's Michelle O'Neill coming? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way we could get Michelle O'Neill on this podcast after this shit that you've said. I've already had some politicians email me back saying they're not coming on. 
But that look, that's going to be the way it is. You'll uh, find someone. Get to, what's that? Who game? do you think is the fittest member of the royal family? Oh, do you know what? I, right, this is a great question because on my TikTok, what's been coming up is pictures of royal family members and they were younger. So oh. like Princess Anne. Princess Anne. Princess was a Anne. fucking right. Are you kidding me? Mate, I swear oh, to God, unreal. Princess Anne. I'm t- and what was she about 70 7, 67 68? I think no she's 72 uh, oh my god when she was 25 30 mate I does she am have, swiping fucking right does she have shit. Instagram remember we messaged her last week let's get fucking princess Anne. Blocked us. I I, I want to get a trend come where we just message princess Anne. princess Anne have an Instagram she probably we'll fucking doesn't we'll set one up <laughs> we'll set one up princess, do you know what she, I think princess she, Anne no. and do you know the other guy Edward the other son Oh not, yeah, not the nonce yep, one, yep, the yep. other one. Yeah, he was fucking stunning. But also blonde hair and yeah. now he's you know obviously older. But his mm. wife is a fucking not a beauty one like when they were younger. But Prince William, when he had her, oh. nay, I tell you what, that's a fall from grace. That like because w- when he had her, ooh, I'm it, looking at a uh, Princess Anne here when she was in her twenties, mate. Because I tell uh, you, ah, you have to like like when I like you look at her and you go like, which princess and easiest wank I've sorry. ever had over a royal oh, family mate. member, <laughs> toughest was Andrew. <laughs> but I but I made it happen. Look at her there, look. Oh, my oh mate, God. she's fucking gorgeous. How was this so overlooked? Because I didn't really think about it until I'd say she's one of those though, like look how posh she is there. But she was number two in line. You like mm. you know her her sister. At, at a time she at, was. Yeah, yeah. She was number two in line, so she probably got away with like loads of shit. Oh yeah. Oh, if you're number two, yeah, you're yeah, the Harry. Yeah, yeah. Oh But there was no way because because the Queen then had like Prince William. So there's no way she was gonna be in line. That's right. That's so right. I'd say she was just fucking out. Just thing. throwing it about. Oh, you work for Danska Bank, come oh. to the toilet. <laughs> you know I mean? fucking I'll touch up with it. But she was so fit. Yeah, and then that crown show, she's a bit of a minx too. Look. Oh yeah, she's stunningly good. Like she's big into her fashion and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, like Princess Anne, I think is this probably the sex sexiest when they were younger. Yeah. But- um, Princess Ed- uh, Prince Edward, if you Google him here, right? Prince Edward. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, for women out there, if you fancied uh, Prince young, Edward. do young. Look at him there, look. Oh, my yeah. My God. Very like William in the respect that when he was younger and had her, gorgeous. What is going on with his hair? They, the, the, the hereditary hairline in the royal family is fucked. So whoever got into the gene pool and fucked that really did a number on, on them, you know? Yeah, because Harry's gone bald as well. Har- I'd Har- say he's gone bald from stress. Harry's not as bad. His is more like thinning and he's still got that front leg. But he curve. does not look like William, does he? Like, yeah, if you think about it, come on. I mean, I know there's the whole conspiracy that he's fucking someone else's kid, but no, I think he, he, there is certain aspects of him that look a bit royally. Yeah. Like there's, like if you look at young Prince Philip, who was the Queen's husband, there's definitely like a little bit of similarity there, I think. You think so? I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I don't know, maybe the ginger just comes from Diana's side. Diana was a babe too. And that I, that was sad when she went. Oh, it's all yeah, it is. But did no, you... but it's more sad that Diana went. Yeah, <laughs> it's because fucking she was good luck. Yeah, she was. She was. She if he, if fucking Ed, bald Edward goes, I'm not blinking twice. Diana goes, I'm fucking yeah, crying. At it. So we would happily agree that Princess Anne, when she was in her, in her twenties, early thirties, was. I, was the best looking one. I think Prince so. Prince Charles was a looker when he was young. Yes, he was. He absolutely, yeah. I but agree, how come he that. doesn't have the fucking baldness? Well, he does if you look at it close enough. He does. He he's has got like the Bobby he has, like, he has the yeah. He's got the Charlton and he's got like a big ball. He's had a bald patch since he's probably like thirty. Yeah. Like when he was going to Diana, he had. How do you get close to these people? What do you mean? Like you know what I mean? Like how do you get? Like you know, not like Meghan Markle. You know, Kate Middleton has a sister. Remember when Kate Middleton got married to Prince Andrew? Everyone was talking about her arse. In the dress, mm. Pippa Middleton is that her name? Pippa Middleton, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you meet these people? Dark, it's these just, people just mix in certain circles. Yeah, don't they? yeah, that's all it is. And and you I don't think... go to a bar and be like, oh, that's the the Duke of Windsor, second in command, and mm. Queen of Sussex, of mm. fucking Norfolk or something. Mm. Like, where do they go? You do if you're Jeffrey Epstein. I know, but where do they hang out? Like, <laughs> um, like I... they all live in what Chelsea, Fulham, Kensington, and they just go to like local nightclubs and with security. Like, it's all networking, isn't it? Or it's all like some sort of like you, you have to have a link in. Imagine walking into Tiger Tiger in Croydon, and fucking Kate Middleton's just in there to <laughs> the fucking line going. William's got the kids tonight. I'm out with the girls. <laughs> fucking penises on straws. <laughs> For, for, for Sandra from Worcester's fucking Hindu like for a second marriage don't worry he's the rank guy for you the t- <laughs> penis is on straws I don't think there's royal protocol for that it is, yeah, this, but you know you talk about like you said there earlier about documentaries being your thing especially yeah. especially in this part of the world uh, in the north 
um, there's I think it's a phenomenal place for documentaries uh, obviously politically culturally the history where we are now in terms of the political atmosphere and mm-hmm. the rhetoric but then you look at a sport here as well oh. and you can see yourself there's so much actually in this small tiny <laughs> part yes, of an island exactly that you can actually do documentaries on like if you weren't if take away your sport documentaries what other documentaries would you like to have a go at so like I would love to do a documentary, and not, I'd love to do a documentary, but like I would love to, we all see the Louis Theroux and we all see all that kind of stuff, but if you were to go away from sport, what outside of sport interests you for a documentary? Travel, 100%. You fucking love this travel thing, don't oh. you? Like, I want a free holiday, Santorini, yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> well, I did I did actually do a travel show, would you believe? Oh, yes, you did. Yeah. It's called, I know what it was called, hold on, hold on, I know what it was called, <laughs> uh, I saw it actually. Uh, I saw you doing the pose with you were wearing a red. Oh, oh what was the called? pose! I like that. Like what was it called? Was it home from home or something? Uh, getaways. 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 Oh, it was right, called. Yeah, I, I did so, it with. So JJ. where did you go? So we did Menorca. We did Crete. We did. Where else were we? I've left one out. Anyway, somewhere else, which was obviously amazing because I've forgotten it. Um. Uh, oh, uh, we were in the Czech Republic. So, yeah, so we did Prague and Varna. And why, you're not going to go back and do that? Uh, well, it all, obviously, it stopped because of COVID. Um, so has that... Okay. So it hasn't got back up and running just yet. I think everything, as you can imagine. I feel like there's one travel I just feel... Disaster I feel, other. Holly, on a level that because we are such a great presenting duo <laughs> and we have... We have, we have pitching this down. We have a CV that knows one event. Yep. But it was but a, we what could an event, go, though. We could go and do a travel show. We could call it South and North <laughs> Bonding. We could call it the South and the North coming together in Mallorca. Yes, in Menorca, yeah. So what we do is we pitch this like all Mallorca. Ireland, all Ireland travel show with a southerner and a northerner. And you go from it from the Northern Irish point of view, and I go from it from the Southern Irish point of view. What, which would be so different. So we go to Rome, right? We yeah. go to Rome and you're opening us. Here we are in Rome and this is where it's six euro for a coffee don't be coming here whereas I'm like going it's only six euro yeah. you know <laughs> you know like we do the Northern Irish angle and the Southern Irish and the Northern Irish angle it's so peaceful and goes yeah finally you got some peace you know you know that kind of I thing I can see it yeah you I can, can see, see it it's yeah, like it's Holly Hamilton and Andrew Ryan you know go rogue <laughs> we we could we could go to Poland. We can do like oh, and here's the Catholic Church. We well, know only one of us will like that. Like, oh, it writes itself. Writes it? itself. Yeah. We need to pitch this. Have you got a production company? Let's set it up. Let's Holly it. Hamilton Let's and Andrew Ryan Productions. Oh, can't even what ask we call it? You. North and South TV. Oh, look at that. Be amazing. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it would be really good, wouldn't it? A little oh, sidekick, yeah. like I, you, you, I where, t- where would you want to go? Where would you want to go? Well, I take it to Cork first of all. Okay, <laughs> I love it. We'll just start big. We'll, <laughs> we'll start, start big. I take it. It's to Cork. an amazing travel show. Mm. Our first episode. So it is Cork. Cork. Holly Hamilton <laughs> in West Cork. Now, Holly, this is where the murder happened in eighteen ninety-seven, <laughs> and I want you to learn about what happened here. You know, and then oh, you can take me to Ireland. Well, you have to have that voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. starting to rethink. If you should we do it? Should we do a little uh, co-present? Do you ever watch? Uh, watch what's that one in the? They, they go banged up, not banged. Up abroad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that one. What's the, what did they, what did they, they go over the Spain? Place in the sun. Place in the sun, right? Yeah. I used to have a joke with that, but anyway, they go over, they go, Sandra and fucking John. It's always what, They've got a 90 John. grand budget and they go out Cash. and they look and they go, Oh, I don't like it here. I don't like it. You know, and they go, Why don't you like it? It's just, I don't see myself reading a magazine, <laughs> right? And they do all this shit, right? And at the end of it, no one buys fucking anything. No. No, they're, and they, they're getting a free holiday out of Yeah, it. pretty much. I honestly, I right? do think it's a genius idea. I think it's so. We should do one, right? This would be our pitch now to BBC One Northern Ireland, right? We could do it. We do. I do a. So we'll just add a little bit, right? So we're going to okay. pretend we're in Portugal, and we're going. What do we call ourselves? North and South North Travel. North and South Travel. Yeah. Right. This week on North and South Travel, uh, no, sorry. Uh, no. Welcome to North and South Travel. I'm Andrew. Uh, welcome to North and South Travel. <laughs> this is what. <laughs> this is going really you, this well. This is so really good. Welcome to North and South Travel. Uh, <laughs> Where should we clap her? <laughs> <Where's the, laughs> right. Right. So, right, we're right. North, North and South Travel in Portugal, right? Welcome to North and South Travel. I'm Andrew Ryan. And I'm Holly Hamilton. This week on North and South Travel, uh, Holly and I go to Faro, where we look at the cancellations of the easier jet flights, where we will catch up with residents from Cork, Dublin and Northern Ireland about their recent experiences. And in the South Bay, we would actually pronounce it uh, Faro, and up here we say Faro. I did, I did it Faro. <laughs> this is the problem with this TV show. Okay, we're not getting the correct words right, but can you keep going? Well, it's okay, because that's what happens. Are you North pregnant? Because I don't think you should be working on this They say it job. wrong, and I say it right. Okay. You know, it's okay. But uh, so I'll be going down south and you're going to be where? I'm going to be uh, going with you because that's the plan. Oh right, I thought we were going to go separately. No, read the fucking script. Oh sorry. Right, so I'll go down south. Where's the uh, south of Barrow? 
I don't fucking know. Like, oh, Morocco, fine. Morocco or something. Morocco. So we're going to Morocco to buy okay. some carpets. Oh, isn't, that, isn't that right? Is that what you do in Morocco? Uh, so carpets and I will buy some rice. Is yeah. that what else? So that's us. For, we're going to Faro and Morocco, bringing you all the tales of everybody in the the, the, the areas that we'd be talking to the people in. Faro. Uh, far, in Faro. Yeah. In Port, Port, Portugal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Easy Jet doesn't fight to Cork, so that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been just right there. But anyway, join us next time on uh, what's the North, 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 North South Travel, Productive. where we actually go to uh, uh, Japan. Oh, oh, can I come there? No, flight's fully booked. Oh, right, okay. And his jet does not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so we could do our own North South Travel yeah, show, couldn't we? Set. Like, this, need, this needs to happen. I feel like we've mentioned enough airlines in this that yeah. like one of them might one of sponsor us, us. One of us would give us something. Yeah, yeah. We could do a Northern Irish, Southern Irish travel show. And we could like you know all of Ireland going going across Europe. Yeah, and I will show the. Be- and what'll happen is that when we arrive in the airport, I go through passport control really quick. Hang on, hang on. And then you just I'll go whatever stay- key I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the you fuckers up here, man. <laughs> It's these little fuckers up here with their two passports. I love just pick which queue. I will win every time. I, I did like that bugs me. That that's one thing about a good Friday agreement. I'm not happy about. That's the one you thing. Get, you get two passports. Oh. I can't even have two girlfriends. Like what's no, going on? It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I didn't even think about that. Uh, Shane, it's really nice to have you on the Cork and the North podcast. No, thanks for have having me. Have you been to Cork? Yeah. Well, how many? Where have you, have you been on holiday? Can or I tell you a quick story. Yeah. Um, I was doing a gig in Cork. Can't remember the venue. City limits. No, in the city. No, no another one. The Maybe it was. Right good, in the city. Good money, right? There was good money in it. Come down, do a spot. There was. Is it a club? Yeah. City limits. Could be. Yeah. Good Let's kid. just go with that if it's easier. Yeah. Uh, but I can't remember. Anyway, guys, like, come down. Couple of hundred euro. I'd never been. I'd never been under Cork, so I was chuffed. I was like, yes, let's go. Uh, so it's like four, four and a half hours down, whatever. And near Kildare Village, just for Kildare Village, yeah. got st- get stuck in roadworks. Now, oh, I like a wee cup of tea as I'm driving, so I've had yeah. a couple of cups of tea on the way down. A few service stops at these roadworks. I need to piss so bad, but there's no garages coming, and we're we're literally we're not moving. So I'm like, I could get out of the car or on think, the motorway. Yeah. I could go piss in a bush. What if the cars start to move? What if the guards arrest me? Fuck's sake! I don't know what to do. So I'm panicking, so eventually I see a Lidl, and this is like, the g- I'm basically, I've timed it, so I'm going to arrive in Cork, and I'm going to do the gig straight away. So I see a Lidl, I go into it, excuse me, do you have any customer toilets? No. Shit, what do I do? Get my Starbucks cup, Oh mate. take the top off, go to the corner of the Lidl car park, broad daylight, a lot of people around. I was like, here's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to piss into this cup, easy easy no problem at all now it was the small Starbucks cup venti or whatever it is so I, I start pissing into it I'm like oh no I'm a pervert I'm gonna get it I'm, maybe I'm flashing away I don't know what I'm doing so I start pissing in it but I I misunderestimate the, the strength of my jet and it starts coming flashing back up, to me fl- splashing up it's splashing up onto my jeans and my t-shirt a bit so I pissed a bit in it so, but I, I, I'm filling the cup so what I do is I know I'm gonna stop throw it out the window and get back to it. But I, I think I have more control over my piss than I do. So I stop, piss out the window, but as my hand's out the window, the jet's back on. I have essentially pissed all over myself in a little car park <laughs> in Kildare. So I was like, maybe this will be fine. But it's not. And it's in my head. I was like, I can't go on the first time with gigged in Cork with pissy jeans. So I know, I'll stop at Kildare Village. Now, the piss is not dry by the time I get to go there village, but luckily I have a big long coat in the car, big pervert's coat. So I put that all the way up. I walk into Kildare Village. I'm like, I'm going to buy the cheapest yes. pair of jeans I can. I don't understand Kildare Village and I don't understand it's a playground for billionaires because I find the cheapest jeans I can, which are in the diesel shop yeah. and they're 95 euro. Yeah. So I have to... And that's an outlet. That's, and that's an outlet. discounted area. That's 20% off or whatever. So I have to go into the toilets in Kildare Village, put on these jeans and then I also saw a wee pair of shoes I liked. So I was like, I'll get them too, I'll put them on. Get down to Cork. I'm like, I'll laugh about this later. Get down there. Walk straight from the car, almost on the stage, two minutes to go. As I walk into the venue, don't have time to think about anything. Guys, like, Shane Todd, I go on. I realise these jeans are far too tight. Real skinny jeans. Plus, I have big feet, so these are size 11 shoes. So, I have skinny jeans and I have wee thin... Don't look at them, I have wee thin legs, like at the bottom. Wee thin feet. So, then my leg, my shoes are so long. 
and I am like, oh, this is so tight. And then I've got to drive home and I'm thinking about it the whole way through the gig. I'm like, I pissed myself an hour yeah. ago and the, I, I ate shit at the gig and I just had to drive home in these like far too tight diesel jeans with my pissy jeans in the back and uh, and it was one of the worst gig experiences in my life. But did you do well at the gig? No. <laughs> right. I ate shit. Can I just, I just want to say, you know the, the delay on the road going down? Yeah. That was me being caught speeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, so I just want to say, I really apologise yeah. there, Shane. For one of the idiot times. <laughs> For one of the nine times, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you drove down and back on the same day. Yeah. That's a fucking... Nat- I don't, I don't talk about... You don't, you're, you're, you're a home guy. You like getting back. I got booked for a gig in Mayo. La- I'm not bragging. I got get booked for, for a gig, gig in Mayo a couple of years ago. Danny O'Brien's like, come down, do this gig. It was a lovely gig. Got down there. He's like, we'll put you up in the B&B. Walked into the B&B. Nothing against it, but I looked around. And I was like, you know what? I'm hitting the car. I'm hitting the road again. That. Drove straight home. I've done that. Yeah, I've done that. Colin Geddes is a trooper because he stayed. I was like, Colin, you're probably going to get murdered tonight. Yeah, and yeah, I drove home. exactly. Oh, it's brilliant. Listen, Shane, thanks so much for coming on to uh, Cork. No, North. thanks Appreciate for having me on. on, man. It's yeah. really good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please go and see Shane. Uh, the rest of his shows on tour, we'll put a link up and stuff like that. Uh, Mr. Hollywood, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And we'll, uh, we'll gig again soon and together, I'm sure. Cheers, thanks for Cheers, man. Thanks, Shane.